Hey guys, Harv here, and welcome back to the Kerbal Space Program. This is our That's No Moon base, and we are here today with episode 6, in which we are going to be doing some base management. So we have, you know, we have a lot of things strewn around across the base as a result of our last episode. I have all our different utilities here. And we have two main things that I've kind of been neglecting, and I'm really happy to be doing this now rather than saving it for later because it's a really fun episode. So first of all, this hangar it doesn't work. We've we've already shown this. So let us fly it away. And I was kind of hoping there'll be enough fuel to actually get it back to Earth or land it. I mean, Kerbin to actually land it on Kerbin, but no, no, there's not enough fuel. So. That's basically the exact same result anyway. <clears throat> Didn't have any parachutes or anything, so it was going to crash at any rate. So, this is our replacement hangar. Same model, same... well, no, different model. Same craft, technique, type, thing, I don't know what I'm talking about. Made by the same person, it's just slightly changed. Now, I will say, having realised something, and also having people pointed out in the comments eventually, no matter how perfect you put your docking ports on your submitted utilities, they will differ slightly, and the reason for that is suspension. The land oh, there's an explosion. <laughs> the landing gear and the landing legs and all the different rover wheels, they do buckle different amounts under different weights. So unless your mass is exactly the same, you're not going to, you know, it's not going to work perfectly. So that's why people who had spent hours placing their docking ports as close as possible, they still didn't work and they got a bit upset about that. But no matter, because this one is slightly improved. I mean, I say that it will change, but, you know, it's it's quite easy to get it as close as possible. Or I should say it's quite hard, it takes quite a lot of time to adjust it perfectly. But now I've landed this one over here, we can load up a rover. The docking board height, for those of you who haven't listened or don't know, the actual docking board height we are using to try and standardise everything is the height determined by two rover wheels on the side of this standard fuel tank. And you can see it doesn't work because this utility thing is quite heavy. Now the solution is to have enough fuel. So the, well I mean RCS on the moon, that might work but it certainly doesn't on Kerbin. Just, yep there we go, just throttle up the engines a little bit and it can push it right up. And just to make sure, we'll move the rover around. Ah, uh, look at this. Look at this insane elite steering skills. <laughs> XX steering skills, XX. Hashtag. But yeah, so we'll try it again. Doesn't quite dock. We throttle up a little and it docks absolutely fine. So there was a nod. <laughs> yes, and that's it. That's everything sorted out with this hangar. So we're go just going to uh, put a decoupler under here. Of course, we're going to make a make a launch stage. We don't need the command module because, I mean, we have a probe and putting a guy in there is has already proven to be a bit a bit difficult in the past. But there we go, we have we have engines, we have launch stage, and you know we'll just add on all the necessary requirements and we'll build that. There we go. Perfectly well built. Order the staging and we are ready to launch. Having not done any action groups. I forgot to do that. So uh, we will actually have to automatically stop those outside engines from gimballing. Which, by the way, if you don't if you aren't accustomed to my usual routine, to improve stability it is a good idea to turn out to turn off the gimbal of all outside engines. So it's the only only the inner one that actually has thrust vectoring. Which by the way are the same thing. Gimballing, for those of you who don't know again, is when the engine tilts away from the axis and it points a different direction rather than straight down in order to turn the ship so you can actually use it to steer and advanced SAS uses it to make sure the craft is pointing in the correct direction at all times or at least it tries to because majority of the time things end up wobbling and it doesn't quite work yeah wobbling also notice how the fuel tanks of that nuclear stage are actually uh, going through the roof hmm Nuclear. Nuclear stage, not nuclear. Nuclear stage. God, if I say that wrong, I'm sorry. Just me me stuttering or stammering or or slurring my words. But yeah, I, I forgot to build this quite right, and as a result it starts oscillating and everything breaks around. Nothing actually breaks, but yeah, you know, they might as well have. So we'll load it up again, try and flick our blunder. Now what we could do is put even struts everywhere, and that's what I try and do, I, I use a good formula, I, I put the struts out, and then when it comes to 6x symmetry, 
Yeah, yeah, putting struts around does not really work all that well. In fact, in there it just looks like a tangled mess. But, oh well. Oh well. And by the way, it wasn't six times, it was actually four times, but no matter. We'll try this again. We're still on the same launch window, we don't have to do any more time warping. Turn off all those outside gimbling engines and launch. And we can get this thing up to the base. So in this episode we have a few jobs to do, and I will go through them. We're going to land this replacement hangar, and hopefully the rover and the little detachment rover thing that came with the living quarters, hopefully we can take them off of the cannon, and we can drive them over to the hangar and dock them. Also the moon tractor's little, uh, what's it called? You know, it's on the front, the scoop, that's it, the scoop. The scoop and those landing legs, we should be able to pick them up on the tractor. Also, the backwards counterbalance that came on the tractor, we should be able to pick that up. Dock everything together, or dock it on opposite sides of the of the landing, the, uh, the hangar we have right here. And that'll be basically everything tidied up neat and the hangar replaced. After that, or deport before, depending on what order this video came in, at some point in this video, we'll also be saving uh, the... or oh, not necessarily saving since we already did that. We'll be replacing our... or getting rid of our sky crane thing. And there we go, we've detached from that big engine and now we use the two nuclear engines which takes an age. I think I need to stop using just two, two nuclear engines because they are so weak compared to the mass they are trying to push. It takes an absolute age. This video, by the way, is sped up to four times speed in editing. God, I feel I feel like there's something blocking my mouth and I just can't quite enunciate properly. I don't know, maybe it's just me, but uh, words, words keep on getting stuck in my mouth. It feels like they're not coming out right. Ah. Oh, the plight of commentating. Oh, I can't talk properly. Oh, I've got no knees. Um, so yes, we've got into orbit and we are now now trying to slow down with these pitifully weak engines. Although we do get quite, quite nice camera views, so that makes up for it. And we are bringing it down. It is currently daytime at the That's No Moon base. <laughs> oh, I was just remembered. I did say, at the end of the previous episode, I, I told you all how I had joined a Minecraft server. Yes, Opcraft. It's a really, really good server. I recommend if you didn't see that you and you want to play Minecraft with Harv, you can go on there. But um, someone built a recreation of Devon's, that's no, no, what was it? Devon's uh, Communications Tower Mark II, the central module, or supposedly central, seeing as our things aren't quite central, but the the main beacon of our base. Someone built a recreation of it in Minecraft, which is pretty awesome. It looked pretty damn good, and I was just wow, that is that is so cool that you would do that. Thanks a lot, but y you don't want to make everything else, do you? <laughs> and the admin of the server, OpDelta gave us a new world and we made a recreation sorry a recreation of our that's no moon base and it was this format as well i i shared some print screens of uh, what the base will look like at the end of this video we tried to remake that it went pretty well until we realized that tnt was enabled and then everything just fell apart and everyone started blowing things up but yeah but yeah, that was that was really cool. I don't actually know. I don't actually know if it's still there. I'm gonna have to go check. But um, I I think that's gonna be an ongoing thing. I, I'm so surprised that everyone actually did it. It's like just me there. Hey, do you want to satisfy my ego? And everyone's just like, yeah, sure. <laughs> anyway, anyway, Minecraft aside, let's return to Kerbal Space Program. We're down here. We've dropped our nuclear stage. We've let it explode. I tell you, there must be so much radiation around. And uh, we we are now trying to get our hangar over to the correct position. Doing things in microgravity <laughs> can be quite difficult, quite tricky to know which way you should go and which way you should point and everything. What would be ideal is if I could en make the engines hover at a certain altitude and then just translate to using RCS. But in reality, the, you can never get the throttle quite right, so it never does work. And now, now, the hangar. I actually end up hanging, uh, parking this in a different place to where the other one landed, and it wasn't actually a better location. No, not here, not here, not here, but I will move it slightly. But um, 
yeah, it's not quite perfect, and I'd rather it be more over to the left from our current perspective, because as I said, the beacon over there in the background, background isn't actually the centre of our base, it's in fact one of the corners of the four separate main utilities we have here. But never mind, that it doesn't matter all that much, I suppose. Let us detach and, and drive into our other tractor. Detach this little detachment thing, and we shall drive it over in this direction. Because now, is, as I said, we want to dock everything together, we want to put everything on the hangar. So we'll drive this over here, here and with this module, we shall pick up the little landing leg uh, fuel carrier thing. <laughs> All it really was, in reality, was just a counterbalance for the for the scoop. But that won't be a problem, so we don't really need to use it for that anymore, unless we do need to use the scoop again in the future. But anyway, we'll we'll go over here, we'll try and dock this thing, the height won't be quite right. So we'll swap to our hangar, and in fact it's actually too... In fact, it is actually too high at the moment. See how the suspension thing changes. But with some with some work... <laughs> and some use of landing legs. We actually managed to get a docked without needing to use fuel. So, all the better. Definitely a massive, a massive improvement over the previous version. So, now we can leave our cannon behind. We will be using that. And, well not in this episode, but we will be using it in the future. And we can drive over with our, with our moon tractor. This is the only facility we have that can actually pick up this scoop over here. So that's what we're going to do first. I'll aim at the current time to reduce as many uh, as many unattached parts as po as possible. So we'll bend down using the uh, <laughs> using the landing gear system that we so cleverly have, thanks to Tanya Sapien. And there we go. We managed to dock with it. We shall reverse and drive over to the other side. So in a few seconds' time. We'll get a brill pretty brilliant demonstration of how physics works in the Kerbal Space Program. So we docked the uh, we docked the detachment rover. That's what I'm calling it now, isn't it? Detachment rover. We docked the detachment rover over on the opposite side of the hangar, and it took a little bit of doing. It didn't work properly. We just rammed it in there, and we, it managed to sink down and actually dock to it. Now, if we back this thing up and just get it perfectly docked, the entire thing will explode and will flip over. Looking at the flight results, nothing caused that. It just basically, basically the little counterbalance weight thing detonated. And everything flips over and everything goes flying. Luckily, luckily, I'm not doing a hardcore uh, KSP moon base. Oh no, I'm not. So, one quick load later and everything's back how it was when we landed the, the hangar. Bit of a setback, but not by a massive amount. So that was... That was interesting, yeah. <laughs> okay, this time round, to uh, save what little time it actually takes. We'll keep these things stuck together, we'll drive it over all at once. I have to say, I have to say the wheels in KSP are done pretty well. I've had very few problems with the uh, with the combination of steering. It's all centred around the where the centre of mass is on your vessel, and it works really, really well. So popping up those landing legs, go over and we'll dock onto that thing, go back and we'll dock back onto this. This is why standardization is important. Being able to dock things together and move them and detach this and attach to that, that is the most useful thing I think we will have. So we'll detach this little bit, we'll pick up our counterbalance detachment thingy-majobby and we'll drive it all back extra weight on the back, tipping us down slightly, making it harder to steer, but there there we go, everything docked. So yeah, everything docked this time. Rather than try the same formation I did last time with uh, the detachment rover and counterbalance on one side and the moon tract on the other side, we're just going to dock everything together onto the hangar. The hangar, the hangar itself is actually a bit small, I've realised. Uh, I will be using the outside ports, but the inside ones, not so much. I'm thinking we leave it here because if we do have little exploration exploration buggies, we will definitely be using the inside ones. But maybe, maybe we'll attach some other kind of omnidirectional docking thing. I don't know. We'll see. We shall see. 
So, now for the second part, where we're going to try and sort this guy out. So we're getting back in his craft, of course, because it has no probe on it, so we need to we need to get someone to pilot it. And now is the tricky question of how do we get this thing in the air without breaking a single part? The idea is to turn off the top two engines. So, similar to how thrust vectoring works, the majority of our thrust is underneath the centre of mass, and that should rotate us upwards and push us into the air. Go, go, and it works, and we spin, and I try and pause in order to turn back on the engines, and things go horribly wrong, and we end up crashing into the ground. Ah, this, I'm thinking, may take a little while to get right. Let's try that again. So this time I'm thinking, okay, okay, so we know we can get out without breaking anything. Let's... no, okay. <laughs> okay, we definitely need to turn at least one engine off. So we'll try that, we'll just have three. That should still help, so if we just turn that one off and get ready to turn it back on, we start, and no. <laughs> just, just no. We need to have the two top engines turned off in order for it to work. That, that is what we've just proven with those previous flights. So we'll turn off both the top ones and we shall fire the lasers or, or the exhaust, get up into the air, turn it back on and uh, that was a wallop. That was a complete flop. Try again, try again, try again, try again. Going back to what I was saying about this thing not being a hardcore mode. <laughs> I would like to play a hardcore mode. I'd like to see a Minecraft-esque hardcore mode in the Kerbal Space Program. Okay, so we turn all our engines on, and, and, uh, no. Ah, maybe, maybe this time. Maybe, maybe this time. So yeah, I'd like to see a hardcore mode. And I've already mentioned this in the past, but my idea of hardcore difficulty would be no magnetism on the docking ports. Uh, if you kill any Kerbal, you die. Oh, no. No, it shouldn't be. If you kill a certain number of Kerbals, then you, you then you end your mission. And there we go, this one was, subs was successful. Let me just carry on brainstorming here whilst we get this thing into orbit. So, um, yeah, if you, if you don't have any magnetism on your docking ports to make things harder, you don't know anything about any of the other planets. Although, th that wouldn't really work for the experienced players who know most of the things about other planets, but, um... I envision that in the future, once you go to planets and use your science equipment, you will find out their their surface acceleration due to gravity and everything. So, if that is the case, in the hardcore mode, you don't get that until you actually go there. Whereas in other modes, you would know it from the get-go, I suppose. And uh, there's probably some other ways you can make the game harder. But that's not really relevant until we get career mode or something. And boy, am I looking forward to career mode. More importantly... I'm looking forward to the next episode of That's No Moon Base, because this one is now over. Thank you very much for watching this episode. If you'd like to submit your last chance to submit the uh, little space station part that I asked for in the previous episode, please do do that. Haha, <laughs> do do. And I'll see you all next time.